In Movies and Money, a big week for Apple. The stock rose 11 sessions in a row, ending that hot winning streak on Tuesday. And on Sunday, Apple broke new ground by winning an Oscar for its original film, Coda, which is now being re-released. Take a look. I've been coaching for Berklee College of Music. I can help you get a scholarship. Coda is also the first film to have a predominantly deaf cast. So proud of those winners. Let's bring in film critic Eric Childress now. Hello to you, Eric. Hi, Angie. Uh, some low lights at this year's Oscars, but definitely some heartwarming moments, including Coda and Quest Love. What were some of your favorites? Well, once they finally got to giving out awards live during the show, things got off to a great start with Ariana DeBose's deserving win for West Side Story and her very moving speech. I would say both of the Supporting Actor Awards were two of my favorites of the night, with Troy Kotzer then winning for Coda with another beautiful speech. Now, many of us got so wrapped up with the slap that in the moment, we may not have had the chance to truly celebrate Quest Love winning for his amazing documentary Summer of Soul, which everyone should check out on Hulu right now. Jane Campion becoming just the third woman ever to win Best Director for The Power of the Dog, which was nominated for 12 awards and only won that one. Now, that has not happened since The Graduate in 1967 won only Best Director for Mike Nichols. Now, Coda may not have been my top choice for the year's best picture, but it was my third choice amongst the nominees, and it really is a lovely story and a true success story that began at last year's virtual Sundance Festival when so many of us saw it opening night. Congratulations to everyone I mentioned. The Lost City took the number one spot at the box office last weekend. Can it repeat this coming weekend? Well, it definitely should be number one this weekend. Now, the Lost City opened to a very promising $30 million last week, and promising because it was the rare original film to post numbers in that range since 2020. Well, we've talked often about original films or ones geared towards adults to gross only $30 million total. It makes for a good start to the preseason, leading into what theaters hope will be a very promising summer. Now, Morbius is connected to a larger universe, so its numbers should be pretty solid. It's hard to say where it might land, but higher than Uncharted and probably not as high as the Venom movie, so I conservatively suggest somewhere around $60 million. Now, The film has been delayed five times, mostly due to the pandemic, including a recent late shift from this January to April. Also, not expecting reviews to be particularly kind, given the film was screened mostly last night for critics. Then again, the same applied to the last Venom film, and its apparent goofy charms worked for some people. Now, critics are increasingly more baffled by Oscar winner Jared Leto's acting choices from Suicide Squad to last year's The Little Things and House of Gucci. But even the less than enthusiastic response from Marvel's Eternals in November still saw a final gross of over $160 million. Always good to have you here. Thanks so much, Eric. Thank you, Angie. Go to businessfirstam.com for where to see our show on TV.